The study of biomechanics and human physiology deals with materials with varying ranges of deformability. Some, however, will deform much more than others. Tissues that deform much less can be approximated as rigid bodies. For this, mostly think of your bones. Deformations undergone by the heart, skin, and intestines, for example, need to be studied using continuum mechanics. The rigid bodies, on the other hand, will be mostly studied through statics and dynamics, which differ from continuum mechanics, do not care about material properties. Now, by no means should you see these as overarching rules. The important thing to understand is that bodies may be still studied through statics even if they're not rigid. It is a matter of what exactly you need to know about the material. For instance, you could not use statics or dynamics to model the formations of a non-rigid body. If you're studying bones, for example, you could use continuum mechanics to investigate bone deformations or elasticity, but statics could also be useful in studying bones. It is just that you would be using it to study movement rather than deformations. So all three of them, statics, dynamics, and continuum mechanics, are subsets of mechanics. While studying statics, dynamics, and continuum mechanics, be prepared to expect different levels of mathematical expectations. You will more likely start with statics, which deals with ordinary differential equations that simplify into easy algebraic equations. Then, you will dive into dynamics with ordinary differential equations. You will finish biomechanics with continuum mechanics, which involves partial differential equations. There will be one set of rules to consider in biomechanics. The first one involves Newton's laws of motion, or Newton's first, second, and third laws. The second rule is the conservation of momentum for statics and dynamics. You will need it when you study motion, flow, and equilibrium. The third one is the conservation of mass, which is very important when studying growth and mass transport. The fourth and final one is the conservation of energy. It will be very important when studying energetics and metabolism. Remember also that in mechanics, the conservation of energy is an important constraint on constitutive laws and an important tool for studying fluid flow. You will see it come back often throughout your biomechanics experience. Now that you have a better idea of the fun you're getting into, let's dive right in. I will see you in the next video.